most people who have been following the series An Intuitive Approach to Blues Harmonica will have come across a form of this table already, but I just thought I'd take a separate video to explain it in a little more detail, especially for those people who are not familiar with a keyboard, but really for anyone, I guess, who still finds this idea of intervals a little mysterious. Hopefully also it might encourage cross-key blues harmonica players in general to think of notes in terms of intervals rather than in terms of sounds, particular sounds from particular holes from a particular instrument. I just think it's much more musical to think of notes this way as intervals. Now there's only one place to start and that's with the major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And what we're actually doing when we use intervals is replacing these nonsense names with names that mean something. So, so say I take the note mi, do, re, mi, it's the third element of the scale, starting on do, so we call mi the third. Say we take the note ti, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, it's the seventh note of the scale starting with Do, and so we call it the seventh. So now we have the notes named in such a way that they give us information. Firstly, they tell us how far the note is away from the tonic, but more importantly, they can give us information about the character of the note, the properties that the note has. Now this is particularly the case in blues, which is associated with certain notes, specifically the lowered forms of the 3rd, 5th and 7th. Now, in the signature tune starting this video, it begins with a very European melody, Pop Goes the Weasel. When I get to the pop, I switch to blues mode, where I'm using these lowered thirds, fifths and sevenths, and the character of the music changes completely, such as the influence of the blue notes, as they're called. So where do we find these blue notes? Well, I've now blacked out the region of the table that gives the strongest versions of the lowered third, lowered fifth, and lowered seventh. Now, just reading from the bottom hole and going up, these are draw notes. The fifth is and the lowered fifth, just bending down. Uh, if we go to the next hole up, that's the tonic, and we're going to bend down from the tonic to the major seventh to the lowered seventh. The next one is the third, and bending down from the major third to the blue third. Next is another fifth, and bending down to the lowered fifth. Now the next one, the final one, is the lowered seventh, and this one, we don't have to bend down, we just draw on the red naturally and it gives the lowered seventh without having to bend. So these are the strongest blue notes that uh, you can get on the harmonica. On the bottom, draw holes. The lowered third, fifth and seventh, the blue notes. The last thing I want to discuss is Do, or the tonic or the keynote, they're all the same thing. Now Do will be pitched at a particular note and we can change that pitch if we, for example, raise Do, make it a higher note, then the rest of the scale just follows so that overall the scale sounds the same in terms of the relationships of the notes to one another and to Do, but the scale overall will of course sound higher. Now an example is the signature tune to this video which is Pop Goes the Weasel and I've played that in F using a, a B flat harmonica in cross key playing of course the key that is played in is a fifth above what's inscribed on the harmonica. So B flat is on the harmonica a fifth above that is F, and that's what the tune is played in. I'm now going to play that same tune to finish in A using a D harmonica. So A is a fifth above D. 
and it shows how we can change the position of the whole scale.